Every new watch is like a new piece of art. It has a different story to tell. The very interesting things about watches, on the one hand you have a high precision device, and the other thing is they have to be hand finished, which is very related to arts and crafts. You have these two worlds in one watch, both the aesthetical aspect of it and the mechanical aspect of it. Here we are at Arnold & Son in our premises in La chaux fonds where we manufacture all of our watches. Arnold & Son refers to John Arnold, who was one of the biggest and most important watchmakers who ever lived. He invented a lot of technical solutions still in use today. The aim of the modern company to innovate and to continue his legacy, but in a contemporary, new manner. The idea is really to continue the story more than to repeating it. First, with the design team, we designed how the watch should look like. The size it should have, the thickness. You have to have a kind of mechanical harmony. Is it good looking or not? And when we are happy with the new complications and we think the watch has something new, then we create basically the inner works which will make the aesthetic happen. The first thing you have to do is to order the right material because we use a lot of different materials into mechanical movement going from brass over steel up to titanium or gold and you need a specific material for every different part of it. Once you have the raw material, you start really making the components. We have different kind of raw materials going to different workshops for depending on the part you want to make. If you want to do watchmaking on a super high level, you need extremely skilled and specifically trained people. We have more than 30 different job descriptions, purely different education, and you find these education, these training only in this region, because nowhere else in the world you need such kind of know-how. Working with tiny parts is a challenge because tiny parts make very small tolerances. We are working in micron tolerances, so you cannot do anything without good tooling. We have in-house a tool-making department, which makes from the little screwdriver the watchmaker needs up to a stamping tool, which takes months of development. The reason why we do our tooling in-house, because if you're not mastering your tools, you're not mastering the part you want to produce. Once all the parts are cut with machinery, they go to be clean. They're submitted to quality control, who decides if the part is good or not to continue to the decoration workshop. Different kinds of traditional movement decorations are applied from Geneva stripes, satin finish, depending on the components. Is a mechanical watch you buy today is not the leading technology anymore. It's really craft and art. You are not racing for technological breakthrough. You are more racing for making more spectacular watches. You build a very different relation to a mechanical watch than you do to an electronic device because the day you buy it, you know that the next one will come and that you will swap it to getting the better one. With a mechanical watch, it's really the object as a physical object of all the handwork which make it special and unique. That makes, I think, a big difference to something more on the electronic side. Once these parts have been decorated, they are quality checked again to see if the decoration hasn't affected the functional aspect of it. That's always a bit of a trick. You have to decorate but not to deteriorate the part. They go to be pre-assembled in a specific workshop before going to the watchmakers set stones, for instance, into main plates, put axes onto wheels, and once all these parts have been pre-assembled, they arrive to the watchmaker who does the final assembly. The watchmaker gets all the little parts in little boxes, starts taking the main plate, which is the base on everything gets built on, adding the wheels, which are all on axes, put different bridges, holding all different wheels in place. You have to add all the winding mechanism because you want to be able to wind your watch put a dial on it, then you put hands. And one last thing which we add always at the end is the escapement, which is basically the heart of any mechanical watch. It's also what you hear when you listen to a mechanical watch, when you hear the tic-tac. It's the very first time you will see and hear your watch moving.
starting from the simple beading, it's a long process going to a highly accurate mechanical watch. You cannot just put the parts together and expect the watch to tell perfect time. We are checking the watches for 600 hours on different vibration and other machines to get really sure that everything is okay. It can be just a little tiny dust, you don't see it when you put it together, but when you move the watch, it kind of falls off the movement. So this process is pretty, pretty long, but this is what the complexity of such a mechanical device requests. Once you think that the accuracy of the movement is good, you put it into a watch case which will protect the movement. You add the bracelet and the buckle and you have a watch. Watches are most of the time perceived as a time capsule. It's really something which are still built today as it used to be for the last centuries. And it's nice, I think, also for people to be able to buy something which has always existed and then probably will always exist as a form of art.